Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So, books. They're pretty great. They can distill a lifetime of wisdom down into something that you can read in only 5 or 10 hours. But I haven't always done such a good job of reading books. Let's be honest, it's way easier to read a blog post or watch a YouTube video. But there's a whole lot of good reasons to read books. And in my opinion, the top three are 1. Reading a book gives you time to go through the story that the author is telling. And because you're reading at a slower pace, it gives you more time to distill and filter the ideas and ultimately learn better from the book. Two, it trains your attention span to be longer. So instead of reading a blog post for six minutes or a YouTube video for 10 minutes or watching a TikTok for 45 seconds, you're training your brain to read pages and focus for hours on end. Reason number three is when you read, there's less of a chance of you getting this feeling of, oh my God, where did all my time go? That feeling you get when you binge watch Netflix or YouTube, you know what I'm talking about. Studies actually show this. They say that when you read books as opposed to watching TV during your free time, it makes you feel like you have more time. So if you want to make your free time feel like it's going for longer, read books. So I used to read books here and there, but the problem was, one, I forget all the stuff in the book that I read pretty much straight after I read it. And two, it felt like all this knowledge that I was trying to get really wasn't adding up to anything. So what I did in 2021 was I set up a Notion database so that I could track all the books that I was reading. I got the template for this database from Ali Abdal, so I'm going to link that down below if you want to grab a hold of it. So this was a total game changer for me and it fixed those two problems that I talked about. So thanks to doing that, I can now sit here and make this video for you today and tell you about my five favorite books from 2021. So to save you from having to watch the whole video, if you want to know what books they are, I'm just going to show them up here on the screen. But if you're interested in knowing why I chose these books, stick around for the rest of the video. So I chose these five books based purely on how enjoyable they were to me to read and how valuable I found the lessons relevant to my own life. So I know that sounds a bit selfish, but bear with me. Hopefully you'll find something useful in here too. Let me know down in the comments if you agree with my book choices. All right, so first up at number five is The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. So this is a great book for anyone with a creative pursuit, whether you're currently doing it as a hobby or you wanna do it full time one day. So it talks about how to beat procrastination, self-doubt, fear, imposter syndrome, and self-sabotage by lumping all these things together and giving it an identity called the resistance. So to quote from the book, most of us have two lives, the life we live and the unlived life within us. Between the two stands resistance. So by doing this, the author actually embodies all of these negative traits and negative thoughts into something called the resistance so that you have something to fight against. And at the same time, it gives you this mental shift so that you can stop blaming yourself for doing these things. So the book also talks a lot about when you decide to take your creative pursuit professionally and how to treat it like a professional would. So again, this is really relevant advice to me at the time and still is today. All right, next up is Storyworthy by Matthew Dix and Dan Kennedy. Now, I'm a filmmaker and I'm still learning about filmmaking. And the most important part of any film is the story. So this book naturally had a lot of appeal to me because it's all about storytelling. This book talks a lot about what makes a good story and how to tell a good story. But nowhere in the book does it mention the three act structure or the hero's journey. It's actually more about telling stories from your own life. But the concepts that the author teaches can be applied to almost any story. So this book has totally changed the way that I see a lot of movies and stories in general. For example, the movie Jurassic Park is actually a story about a man who learns to love children. But it's wrapped up in a movie about dinosaurs so that you will watch it. So I've actually put the homework for life exercise that he mentions in the book into my daily life and I've been using it mostly every day for the past year. And it's a really cool way to remember your life by just summing up your day in a few sentences, making a tiny little story. So looking back, it really makes me feel like my life was a lot more interesting than I otherwise thought. This book is really well written and the author, Matthew Dix, has had a really crazy life. He talks about stories from his own life while teaching the concepts about storytelling at the same time. So it's a really good way to teach and it really keeps the book interesting. You'll have to read the book to find out. All right, so next on the list is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. So this book was amazingly written. Out of all of the books that I read last year, this one was my favorite in terms of the writing. It was just the most beautifully written book that I'd read last year. And it's another one that I couldn't put down from when I started. The story was just written really suspensefully. There was always an interesting plot twist around the corner. So this is a fantasy book with a really interesting magic system. And it's almost, almost believable. So the way that the story is written is really well paced and it maintains the suspense for almost the entire book. So it's really hard to put down. It is a really long book and it definitely kept me up late for a few too many nights. You've been warned. Now I've also read the sequel, 
which was also amazingly written, but not quite as well as the first. Now the worst part is, so for everyone out there like me who's read these two books, we are still eagerly awaiting the final and third book in the series. And given that the second one was finished in 2011, it's been almost 10 years, and we have no idea when the last one will come out. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Hopefully it won't be long. But yeah, would still recommend giving this one a read. All right, so next up is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. So this one's a sci-fi book, and Andy Weir also wrote The Martian, which became a movie starring Matt Damon. Now, I love Andy Weir's books because they're all science-y, they have lots of calculations and astronomy and just nerdy stuff like that that really speaks to me. And this book is no different. So it has a lot of science that is actually real, combined with stuff that is like almost real, and really makes you believe that, okay, this could be possible. So to me, it just makes that a lot more interesting. Now, this book is ultimately a story about friendship, sacrifice, and passion. And it's really smartly written, it's got lots of twists and turns and nail-biting moments. So overall, I really enjoyed this book. Good one, Andy. Alright, so number one, my favourite book of 2021 was Will by Will Smith and Mark Manson. So this one is a memoir of Will Smith's life, and it dives into all the challenges and the triumphs of all of the achievements in his life and all the ups and downs. So it talks about the intense work ethic that shaped Will Smith from a young age, and it's also one of the things that he's well known for. It talks about how he overcame racial stereotypes to become one of the most successful actors in Hollywood and proved that black actors could also be superstars. It goes through his whole life's journey from when he was a kid to becoming one of the first Grammy Award winning rappers in the world to becoming the star of a hit TV show to just making a killer streak of box office successes. I love how he shares that it wasn't all rosy along the way. He dealt with domestic violence, he dealt with bullying, there were times that he wasn't a good husband, he went through a divorce, he wasn't a good son, he wasn't a good friend at some point, he wasn't a good father. So there's this real humanizing aspect that you really get from the book. So this book gets number one for me because I've been a fan of Will Smith for a long time. And it really is a one of a kind journey and it's overall really inspiring. Now, if you're thinking of reading it, I would really, really suggest getting the audiobook. It's one of the best produced audiobooks I've ever heard. It's read by Will Smith, so it's got all the passion, the charisma, the drama, all the humor in his voice, um, and it really, it really brings the book to life. So in the book, he does rapping, he's got impressions, there's even background music that comes on that really illustrates certain scenes. Overall, to the team that made this audiobook, great job. Now, some other honorable mentions that didn't make the top five. First up is Ready Player One. Now, I coincidentally read this book just before the whole metaverse craze broke out. It was a really interesting and fun book, actually. I enjoyed it way more than I enjoyed the movie. Second is Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. This book is also a memoir, and it really lets you get into the head of David Goggins and just the ridiculously tough mind that this guy is. Now, I don't really see myself becoming anywhere near that level, but it really makes you look at your own mind and think about your own limitations. It makes you think about whether or not they are actually real limitations. Third is the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. This is another fantasy series with a really interesting magic system as well. This is my introduction to Brandon Sanderson as an author and whew, it was epic. It was great. I will be reading more books of his in the future. Alright, so that is it. I hope you've enjoyed my list plus a few bonus books. So if you've enjoyed reading these, let me know down in the comments below. Also let me know whether or not you agree with my list or if you have any recommendations on what I should read for 2022. Thanks for watching, have a good one, see ya.